Welcome to the Snarky Snippet Golden Globe Edition. The Golden Globes have many significant moments. One of the most disappointing ones was Timothy Chalamet's date, Kylie Jenner. They seemed to be loved up, and I admit to a disappointed gasp when he went in for that spontaneous kiss. It just felt wrong, even a bit wonky. He needs to be with a serious... Okay, I'll allow beautiful woman who is touring with the National Shakespeare Company or a French mystery woman with a gap in her front teeth, not an influencer whose family displays their shallow lives via a tacky reality show. I suspect Selena and Taylor agree with me. We will comfort ourselves that it is a mere fling, dear listeners, and it will soon return to a world of pure imagination. Then on to the Suits cast, barely managing to conceal their dislike and disconnect from Meghan Markle. They don't have her number, and to quote for emphasis, they really don't. The discomfort when each actor was asked about the disconnected Duchess was palpable. When they graced the stage, I felt the audience's reaction. While welcoming, it was a tad mixed. The shadow of the claw follows you everywhere, it seems. It destroys careers, families, and coffee blends. There is speculation Megan didn't even get invited. I'm sure the producers and PR people associated with Suits and Netflix would have reached out to Megan for this Suits reunion, and their invitation was merely declined. Actually, a few hours ago, that was confirmed via a Sussex source and page six. She was invited, apparently, but she knocked it back because she was busy. If I was the Duchess, I suspect I would be a little intimidated and worried about what sort of reaction I would receive, especially after the Variety Power of Women event. She was probably terrified to bump into Margot Robbie, or worse, get chewed along the red carpet again to make way for the real stars. I sense Meghan has imposter syndrome when around real Hollywood stars, and I just think she should lean into that. Patrick Adams really gave the game away in regard to a possible Seuss revival with his incredulous reaction to the rumours. It came across as a little contrived, Patrick, a bit deliberate, and his wife's panic and quickly neutralised face convinced me. I muttered to myself, my, my, it's actually happening. Imagine all the demands for her conditions for returning to the set. A red carpet leading to her trailer, Duchess of Sussex on the door, a makeup chair with Princess Meghan and a little crown on the back, a separate crying room for all her staff stocked with tissues and self-help books, and a towable white padded cell for Harry to tap in. Not to mention her own team of writers to implement all her script revisions that she'll later blame on the palace. She'll finally be number one on the call sheet, squeezed into a skin-tight skirt, her deal or no deal push-up bra, and lashings of Catherine's brand of lip gloss. She'll be a vision of middle-aged effort, acting her little size 13 shoes off. Can't wait. Rumour has it filming is being delayed because she's still recovering from the perceived slights at Her Late Majesty's funeral. Meghan felt ignored and sidelined because she was. She simply can't understand why her tearful, one-eyed grief wasn't given centre stage and the candle placed in front of her was the final straw. She'd practised her close-ups at Frogmore all morning. When they checked their recordings after they got home, the only sound they captured were footsteps quickly walking away from them and Charlotte saying in the background, I don't want to stand next to the mean lady, mummy. She wanted comfort. She wanted acknowledgement. She wanted the throne. It's all very difficult. Why won't they all fall into line, thinks Megan. I suspect 2024 will bring us Malibu, Megan, self-obsession mixed with sand. Gnarly, dude. Bye.